<laughs> so the origami part of it is a single sheet of paper folded, etc., etc. But there are certainly brothers and sisters, and I'll show you one of those, and also a few first cousins of it, in which, for instance, this is a, a pursuit which I haven't done myself, but I got that about 20 years ago, and it's got the four S's, I call it, stiffly starched Swedish serviettes. They put a lot of starch into their serviettes when they're, re when they're uh, putting them through the laundry and make them very stiff, so they make wonderful figures, which I expect to see on my table if I'm at a very, very smart restaurant. There's another pursuit, which again, I've got a book, but more, much more recently, called Towel Origami. It is something I expect to find in my room if I was in a five-star hotel, perhaps, and being shown around the room, and in the bathroom would be neatly folded towels, but preferably with something like this, just to charm and amuse the guests. So there are a few other bits and pieces, but coming back to paper, there's also quite a number of activities, one of which is called modular origami, where you start with a bit of paper, you fold it like that, and that, would you believe, is as far as you go. But what is it? It's nothing very much. Well, the answer is that's just one little piece, probably like that eventually when it's done, of a form of origami, which is called modular origami. That might be the piece, for instance, something like this. This is an example of modular origami. We've got six sides. One of them is a bit of yellow paper, a square of yellow paper with white on the back, and red with white on the back, and green with white on the back, two of them. When you put them together, you get a very interesting figure, but not a single piece, which is pure origami. And a friend of mine, Angus Lavery, introduced this to me about 30 years ago, I think it was. It did remind me, in fact, that I had already come across the Magic Rose Cube, which is the same activity, but taken to a much higher level, because that's not a single piece of paper. That's three bits of red for the petals and three bits of green for the leaves. But Angus's work was much more refined and took small bits of paper, some of them very small indeed, and did simple foldings and then inserted and assembled them into, I have to say, mostly geometrical figures, but some of them are fascinating. There's another one he's made at that time. This is when Angus was in London and working at Hamley's. It's got a very strange figure because it's basically like a tetrahedron, but it's got a peculiar base to it, which is not quite the same at all. And this is a little more interesting still. Something like that I have actually made, but for another purpose. The last one he made, and he's very kindly given all these to me for my collection, is this extravagant looking one, which is beautiful. That's made of um, four, eight, 12 pieces for the top piece, and 12 more here, and 12 more here. That's a total of 36 pieces of paper, each one folded to the same way. You have to fight boredom if you're, if you're um, doing this, because you're just making the same thing over and over again. But the fun there is assembling it into something as complicated as that. And this is small fry. There are some much bigger ones. I've seen ones with 100 faces in it or 50 stars sticking out with it. it. Must have taken many hours to work. So it's a wonderful activity, modular origami, and worth looking at. You'll find many books in it, many articles, much on the internet on modular origami. And it's certainly a thing to get kids involved with because they start off with a very simple bit of paper folding, which gets them on the way, as it were. Look out for it. It's good. Thank <laughs> you.